Welcome back to the Deep Dive. Today, uh, we're going to be looking at something that sounds a little bit like science fiction. A little bit. Well, m maybe a lot like science fiction. Yeah. We're talking about emergent abilities in large language models. Yeah. And, uh, you know, those AI systems, you know, they're getting pretty good at doing things like writing and translating. I mean, we've all messed around with ChatGPT enough to see that. Right. But the research that you gave me goes way beyond, you know, those parlor tricks. Yeah. So you're our resident AI whisperer, so to speak. Mm -hmm. What's the big deal about these so-called emergent abilities? Why should our listener even care? Well, what we're finding, and this is what's really fascinating, is that just by making these models larger, we can actually get them to suddenly develop abilities that no one programmed into them. Okay, so it's not just a case of them just getting like incrementally better. It's like they hit a certain point and boom. New skills just appear. It really is. It really is. And that's what's so fascinating about it. Because yeah. it's like we give them more data, we give them more computing power, and it's like all of a sudden it clicks and they can do something new. That's wild. Do you have like an example from your work that illustrates this? Yeah. So there's a great example in the Emergent Abilities of Large Language Models paper. And in it, they talk about uh, teaching an AI to do basic math, you know addition, subtraction, things like right, that. Right. And what they found was that the smaller models were totally clueless. It didn't matter how much they trained them, they just couldn't get it. Nope. But then when they hit a certain size, it was like a switch flipped. And all of a sudden they could handle, you know, multiple digit problems, not flawlessly, but way better than just random guessing. Okay, so we're essentially saying that there's this hidden recipe for AI evolution that we've just stumbled upon. Yeah, pretty much. So what other abilities have researchers seen kind of popping up in this way? Oh, all sorts of things, really. Like answering those really open-ended, challenging questions, you know, the ones that really make you think. Yeah. Or being able to follow these really complex instructions, maybe even breaking them down into steps on their own. Wow. Some models are even developing the ability to evaluate their own knowledge and know when they're confident in an answer versus when they're just guessing. See, now this is where it gets really interesting for me. Does this mean that these AI systems are basically thinking for themselves? What kind of future are we looking at? I think it's a little early to say that they're thinking in the way that humans do. Okay. But it certainly raises a ton of questions, right? Yeah. I mean, if we keep scaling these models up, what other abilities might they develop? Could they become even better at things that we haven't even imagined yet? See, that's what I mean about the science fiction vibes. It's exhilarating and also a little bit daunting at the same time. But it's important stuff for our listener to grasp. I mean, we're talking about a potential revolution in AI here, right? Without a doubt. But, you know, just like any revolution, it's not without its potential downsides. Okay, so let's talk about those potential downsides. What kind of risks are we looking at here? Well, the thing is, just like positive abilities can emerge unexpectedly, so can negative ones. And we actually have a name for those. We call them emergent risks. Emergent risks. That has a nice ring to it. Give us some examples, like what kind of things keep you up at night? Well, imagine this. You have a large language model, and it's designed to, let's say, generate marketing copy. Okay. Sounds pretty harmless. Right. You would think so. But then as it becomes more complex, it might develop the emergent ability to subtly manipulate emotions. Oh, I see where you're going with this. And that could lead to, you know, potentially harmful advertising practices that we never even anticipated. Right. So it's not just about the AI doing something that's inherently bad. It's about it developing these abilities that could be misused. It's like giving a toddler a chainsaw. Exactly. And that's why so much of the research right now is focused on really trying to understand the why behind these emergent abilities. It's like we've stumbled upon this incredibly powerful new tool. But we haven't quite figured out the instruction manual yet. Exactly. Okay, so it's not enough to just keep building bigger and bigger models. We need to actually figure out what's happening inside those black boxes. Yes, precisely. It's like we're trying to bake a cake by just randomly throwing ingredients together. Yeah, sometimes you get lucky sometimes. Sometimes you get lucky, but a lot of times you end up with a mess, right? <laughs> <laughs> we need to understand the recipe, the why behind the cake in order to actually perfect it. That makes a lot of sense. Now, our listeners sent in some research that touches on some fascinating new insights from recent experiments. Was there anything in particular that caught your eye? Yeah, there's one finding that I think is really interesting and has to do with those thresholds that we were talking about earlier. You know how we said that models often need to reach a certain size before a new ability emerges? Right, right. Like the MAD example. Exactly. Well, it turns out that that's not always the case. Really? 
Yeah. So recent research suggests that sometimes those abilities, the ones that seem to pop up out of nowhere in larger models, can actually be unlocked in smaller models with a little bit of clever tweaking. Interesting. So what, like a more efficient architecture or something? Exactly. A more efficient architecture, maybe a higher quality of data, or even just a slightly different training approach. So you're telling me that we might be able to get those same remarkable abilities without needing a supercomputer the size of a small country. Potentially, yes. And there's actually a really cool example of this with something called the Word in Context Benchmark. So earlier work with GPT-3, you know, one of those massive language models, had suggested that scaling up alone wouldn't be enough to really solve this benchmark. Okay. But then a new model came along called Paul M, and it used a different architecture and a different training method. And boom, it was able to achieve above random performance, even at a smaller scale than the largest GPT-3 model. So it's not just about brute force. It's not just about throwing more data and computing power at the problem. It's about working smarter, not harder. Yeah, exactly. That's a game changer. It really is. And the implications of this are huge. I mean, it means that access to these incredible emergent abilities might not be limited to, you know, a few tech giants with tons of resources. Right. It could be more democratized. Exactly. Smaller research labs, even individual researchers, could potentially contribute to unlocking these abilities in a more controlled, ethical, and accessible way. That's a much more optimistic outlook than I was expecting. Yeah. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. There's still those emergent risks that we need to be mindful of, right? We can't just ignore the potential downsides while we're busy chasing after the next big breakthrough. Absolutely not. And that brings us right back to why understanding the why behind emergence is so critical. Because if we can pinpoint what triggers these unexpected abilities, both the good and the potentially bad, then we actually have a fighting chance of steering this technology in a direction that benefits all of humanity. All right, listener, we've thrown a lot at you today. We've explored what emergent abilities are, hinted at the why, but now comes the so what. So if our listener were to take away one thing from our conversation today, what would it be? It really is like we're standing at the edge of this vast, uncharted territory. Yeah. You know, we've seen these glimpses of these amazing, almost magical abilities coming out of these large language models. Right. But we don't really understand how they work. Exactly. And the really important thing here is that we need to approach this new frontier with, well, a sense of wonder, but also caution. Right. So walk softly, but carry a big stick. Yeah, something like that. We need to support research. We need to be transparent. And most importantly, we need to have a global conversation about this, about where it's all going, what it means. Because this isn't just about ones and zeros, right? It's about the future. It is. It's about the future we're building together. And that's happening right now. Well said. Listener, we've definitely given you a lot to think about today. We've talked about what these emergent abilities are. We've scratched the surface of why they happen. And we've even thought about what it all means. But this conversation isn't over. They're not even close. What do you think about all this? Have you had any experiences with AI that have really surprised you? Let us know. Head over to our website, leave a comment. Maybe your question will be our next deep dive. Until next time.